Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. I kind of like to hear this kind of thing from people who have been in the crypto space for a longer time than myself. This is my third crash in the crypto market and I am not phased by it, says Ripple's Ashish Birla. Now this article is about mostly something else, but uh, Ashish Birla does mention um, in a quote that, you know, he, he's been through crash after crash after crash and, you know, th these guys aren't phased by the day-to-day -day price. These guys realize what they're dealing with and the potential XRP has in the future. And so, you know, we're watching the markets and, you know, there's a bit of a rebound. Uh, XRP just about hovering around 31 cents. It's 0 0.308 right now. One thing, though, you got to remember, and I saw somebody put this on Twitter. I don't remember who it was, um, but XRP is actually up 26% from its all-time intra-year low. So it hit a year low of, I think, 24 cents this year, and now we're up to just about 31 cents. We're actually up 26%, if you can believe it. I know that uh, kind of probably feels like a kick in the face, but technically we are up from our intra-year low. And so today I found this article, XRP ecosystem blooms as the year ends, ripple our three leave animosity behind and more. And so a Twitter fan channel of XRP called XRP Research Center today uploaded a list of successes and developments that have taken place in the XRP ecosystem since mid-October. The tweet was mainly about the integrations that have been made in the ecosystem, wherein some of the mentioned ones were the adoption of XRapid by SendFriend and R3 choosing XRP as the first settlement mechanism for Corda Settler. See the full tweet below. And I found the tweet. Um, very interesting. I just started following XRP Research Center. That's at XRP Center. Uh, and here's the tweet here, guys. There's a great infograph here uh, demonstrating kind of all the partnerships and um, developments, more or less, that we've seen in the XRP ecosystem. And apparently that says this was only since mid, yeah, mid-October. So this doesn't even include, from what it looks like, doesn't include the first nine months of the year, but, oh, or maybe they meant mid-October, meaning this is when this was released. Um, nevertheless, you can see here uh, X Rapid Exchanges, and it kind of gives you some logos here of what those ones were. We see Transfer Go, Unipay in here, Zip Remit, some familiar names if you guys have been um, doing your research on XRP. And of course, the liquidity providers, Bitso, Bitstamp, Bittrex, uh, Coins.ph. We got uh, the Codius logo down here. I was, when I scroll over it, that uh, shaded bar comes up. Mojaloop Bank of England in here. R3 partnership up here, right? We have the SBI lineup up here. The Remit Virtual Currencies FinTech Incubation. And it's all connected here to XRP. And so, you know, it, we got to remember, we are doing the right thing. The investment we're holding is the right one. And I know it's hard, you know, if you're not in the crypto space like this guy, uh, it's hard to take this down market for what it is, just another down market that will recover. And I know it, it might feel today like that is not going to happen, but you have to have faith. I don't know if you guys watched that Modern Investor video that I uh, was mentioning a few days ago is Crypto Dead. He really lays out um, the framework for why you guys should believe and hold on to your positions, whatever, whatever they may be. I came across this article too, um, regulatory overreach is crippling the U.S. crypto sector, says law professors. Very, very interesting. Um, a law professor has reached an unflattering conclusion regarding the regulatory climate of the crypto space in the United States. It's confusing. According to Carol Goforth, who teaches at the University of Arkansas Law School, overlapping regulations produced by a multitude of distinct agencies with different missions and priorities has resulted in a confusing mix of classifications and requirements for crypto assets. So, to illustrate her point, Goforth noted that there are four federal agencies in the United States which regulate crypto assets to a certain degree and form. The Security and Exchange Commission, SEC, uh, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, CFTC, the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, FinCEN, and the Internal Revenue Services, so the IRS. And so all these guys have their own mission and their own set of requirements in order to come up with some kind of framework for regulation. And what, what's happening is bureaucracy is getting in the way, as it does with everything. So, you know, governments work slow. We know this. They're notorious for it. They want to do it right. And this is part of the holdup here. Since cryptocurrency is so new and is going to be a, bur a burgeoning um, industry in societies around the world, they have to get this right and they do not want to screw it up by being too lax. So what they do is they overcompensate by being too stringent or complex. 
consequently, the various federal agencies have varying definitions of crypto assets, of course, and this sows complexity and confusion. In its regulatory role, the SEC, for instance, treats the issuance of new digital assets as securities. The CFTC, on the other hand, views all crypto assets as commodities, while the IRS sees crypto as property. In contrast, FinCEN regulates cryptocurrency exchanges as money exchangers, effectively leading to the conclusion that the U.S. Department of the Treasury Bureau views crypto assets as currency. So they're all trying to step over each other and defining these things in the ways that they have traditionally uh, found to work for them. The problem is the left hand isn't talking to the right hand. I think that what they need to do is all kind of come to a conclusion, come to a overarching kind of framework and not just within the united states you know with other countries around the world everybody should be sitting down and that was partially what the g20 summit was about just uh, recently these guys should really be hammering this out because this is the future it's on the doorstep it is happening another piece of news here just to get you guys a bit excited about 2019 for cryptocurrency uh 2019 will be a big year for stable coins and i'm not going to get into this but i thought about this statement i'm going to link all this in the description guys as i usually do Thought about this for a while, and I thought to myself, 2019 will be a big year for stablecoins. Hmm. Why would we need so many stablecoins in 2019? Could it be possibly that we're going to see a lot more volatility in 2019? Well, you know, the market's already bottomed out as much as it possibly could. I mean, maybe it could bottom another 10, 15% or so, but stablecoins were created so that you can kind of trade your crypto for a stable asset that's pegged to the US dollar. Traditionally, the stablecoins pegged to the US dollar and keep it secure so that you're not exposed to the wild fluctuations uh, when the crypto market gets rolling. And so when they are saying here, 2019 will be a big year for stable coins, to me, that makes me think that they're getting more stable coins on the market. They're really trying to have a way for people to trade their crypto. Once they see these wild swings, we really need to be able to put them somewhere. You can't really tr exchange your crypto for another crypto because if, if the market is just kind of working in tandem, uh, as it has in the past, all the cryptos are going to be doing the same thing. So the stable coins are a good tool to use in order to get out of the crypto space and dump your investment into something that is just pegged to the US dollar. So 2019 will be a big year for stable coins, guys. Uh, the XRP ecosystem is booming. What will 2019 hold? I think we're going to see a lot of price action. I think we're going to see the beginning of a bull run and possibly by the end of 2019 achieving new all time highs. But I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.